Hey guys, my name is Regis Pride, and welcome to my perspective. Uh, I'm going to start today, uh, I'm going to be talking about politics. Uh, I voted for Trump, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, this is 10 examples of Donald Trump being racist. Uh, Justice Department sued his company twice for not wrecking to black people. Uh, in 1973, I'm just gonna read the headlines. I'm not gonna go through it. I'm, you know, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna place this in the description so you can go on and read through it. Uh, he refuses to condemn white supremacists who are campaigning for him. Uh, his questions whether President Obama was born in the United States, he questions, uh, which is apparently racist, questioning whether President Obama was ra born in the United States because a place of birth has to do with race. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with ancestry. Uh, he treats radical groups as monoliths. Uh, he trashed Native Americans too. Well, I'm Native American. In 19... I, I'm gonna go through this, because I am Native American. I'm, uh, f about 49 confirmed, 50, uh, percent. I'm rounding it up to 50 percent. Uh, Native American. Uh, Ojibwe. Chippewa Cree tribe. We're from, uh, s s uh, southeastern Canada. Uh, 1993, when Trump wanted to open a casino in Bridgeport, Connecticut, that would compete with, uh, one own... With one owned by a Ma uh, I, I don't even know, uh, Mash Mashantucket Prequoit Nation, a local Native American tribe. He told the House Subcommittee on Native American Affairs, "They don't look like Indians to me. They don't look like Indians to Indians." Uh, Trump then elaborated on those remarks, which were unearthed last year in the Hartford Current, by saying the mafia had infiltrated Indians' casinos, which it had. Casinos at the time were major commerce houses. You know, they were good fronts for drug businesses. And honestly, if you're going to, you know, work somewhere, you're going to want to work someplace where police don't want to go. Somewhere where police don't really want to go and bother looking at. Someplace maybe where the police are afraid of discriminating against a certain uh, minority of people. So, casinos were a very good house of commerce. Uh, Native Americans certainly don't, you know, at the time at least, they didn't have much love for the American uh, government, so sometimes laws weren't exactly followed. <sighs> he encouraged mob justice to, uh, in the wrongful imprisonment of the Central Park Five, he condoned the beating of a Black Lives Matter protester. And he called the supporters who beat up a homeless man, Latino man, passionate. For so of course they're passionate. If, you know, radical Islamists are passionate about their beliefs. Of course they're passionate. You know, uh, the, the Roman Catholic Crusaders were passionate about their beliefs. Uh, he stereotyped Jews as good negotiators and political masterminds. Now, <laughs> both Asian and Jewish families, uh, you know, generally put a high emphasis on success and, you know, good family upbringing and stuff like that. You know, they longer than you know, other ethnic uh, people, such as uh, African Americans and whites, uh, put a value on the family unit. And this is more conducive to learning, more conducive to, dare I say it, uh, you know, uh, submission to authority, since there's a strong father figure in their house. It's not racist. It's, you know, generalizations are there for a reason, because usually it's general. Now, some of these are true, some of these aren't. 
some of these went with the times. You know, America 40 years ago was a different culture. America 70 years ago, we still had slaves. Uh, you know, America 40 years ago, we had World War II. You know, America isn't a paragon of virtue, but, you know, what are we, what are we, um, comparing it to? You know, Russia? <laughs> you know, North, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> North Korea? <laughs> oh, man. So, now these are in the past, and, you know, of course Donald Trump, he's not going to apologize for him. This is standard political dirt. Some of it's true, some of it isn't. Honestly, a lot of it I don't care about. A lot of it's not true, too. Like, he condones the beating of a Black Lives Matter protester. I don't condone the beating of him. Uh, the guy was in a, uh, a private event yelling in obscenities at the top of his lungs. A lot of these, you know, a lot of the right-wing guy, uh, right-wing uh, conservatives still feel very passionately about protecting their uh, children, uh, protecting their uh, wives, you know. And if some guy's yelling and being belligerent in a crowd, you know, before my beliefs, I'd probably knock him in the mouth too. You know, I can understand it. It's human uh, nature. Uh, you know, but I, I don't encourage it, and it's wrong, but it it's true, it happens. And now on the left, we're seeing that a lot now with the Black Lives Movement. You know, how many people have been assaulted now at uh, exiting Donald Trump rallies? I'm just saying, you know, uh, everybody's for gun control, but come on, are you seriously that stupid? <sighs> so... This is the dirt on Donald Trump. I'm going to put this down on a sticky note so I can put it in with uh, the description. The, yeah, the description below. You can read it. Now, let's look at Hillary Clinton. Now, unlike the other politicians of the race, we already have a background for Hillary Clinton. We know how she was under power. We know how she reacted in the White House. We have first-hand accounts of Secret Service members who saw how she acted in the White House. And it was not good. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk. I'm, again, I'm going to put this on the note card. Okay, Hillary Clinton is a hardly uh, is a hardly a friendly person. She is cold, calculated politician who has a temper. Her husband never showed at the White House. Uh, now we know how she treated those assigned to protect her. She was arrogant and a nightmare. It's Washington's Post. Uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, how she treats the Secret Service. Good morning, ma'am. A member of the Uniformed Secret Service once greeted Hillary Clinton. You know, the people who are willing to give their lives to protect the people in the White House, you know, those people who are trained to jump in front of a bullet, who are trained to get the president and all his aides to safety? Good morning, ma'am, a member of the Uniformed Secret Service once greeted Hillary Clinton. Fuck off, she said. Excuse my profanity. That exchange is one of many that active and retired Secret Service agents shared with Ronald Kessler, author of First Family Detail, a compelling look at intrepid personnel who shield Americans, presidents, and their families, and at those whom they guard. Uh, Kessler writes flatteringly and critically about people in both parties regarding Clintons, Kessler, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. When in public, Hillary smiles and acts graciously because she's a politician, Kessler explains. As soon as cameras are gone, her angry personality, nastiness, and imperiousness become evident. 
Hillary Clinton can make Richard Nixon look, at, <laughs> look like Mah Mahatma Gandhi. Let's remember Mahatma Gandhi once, you know, led a force into battle. Hillary was rude to agents, and she didn't appear to like law enforcement or the military. Former Secret Service agent to Lloyd Bullman recalls, she wouldn't go over and meet military people or police officers as most prostitutes do. She was just really rude to almost everybody. She'd act like she didn't want you around, like you were beneath her. Hillary didn't like the military's aides wearing their uniforms around the White House. You know, the, the certain leadership uh, place in our country. One former agent remembers she'd asked if they'd wear business suits instead. The uniform's a sign of pride, and they're proud to wear their uniform. I know that the military was really... was actually really offended by it. Now, if she's willing to treat someone who is trained and who is willing to give their life to protect her and the one she works for, how can we expect this woman to feel any better about the American people. But yeah, let's see this on the news. Okay, so let's talk about the emails. Oh, not to mention that uh, Google is censoring search results. Uh, Hillary Clinton's 55,000 pages. Nope. Okay, so the State Department said today it can't find Brian Pajano's emails from the time he served as Secretary of State of Hillary Clinton's senior information technology staffer during her tenure there. Pajano would have been required to turn off any official communications for his work account before he left the government. State Department's officials said he had an official email account, but they can't find any of those records he would turn over and continue to search for them. The department has searched for Mr. Pelagino's email. Post file is not located that one covers the time period of Secretary Clinton's tenure. State Department spokeswoman Elizabeth Oh, I'm not even going to try. Said today, referencing a file format that holds email. To be clear, the department does have records related to Mr. Pelagiano, and we're working with congressmen uh, and Freedom of Information Act requesters to provide revealed material. The document has been located. Uh, da, 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 da. Where can we get to the... Uh, da, 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 da. Can I find a number? Zero. Let's just, see, let's just see if we can find a zero. Okay. I can understand one or two documents. Okay? I, you know, I, I understand. Government bureaucracy. One or two, maybe ten, maybe a hundred uh, at most. Hillary Clinton's 55,000 pages of... Uh, you know, at most, papers lost by bureaucracy and red tape. That's not what happened. The woman who was in charge lost 55,000 pages of emails. And the FBI is not able to locate it when she's under subpoena. Subpoena. Again, do you think she has the best interests of Americans at heart? As far as, uh, who's the other guy? Um, shoot, I can't remember. Was he a doctor? No. Ben Carson. Uh, you know, the only problem I have with him is his free college. You know, and any, anybody who has any, you know, brains knows that nothing's free in this country. Everything has to come from ev somewhere, and if we give every college student in this country free uh, college when, you know, our tax, when, when Americans already don't, you know, when half Americans don't even want to pay for public schooling, now with all this junk about feminism being, you know, brainwashed into our college students, why, <laughs> no free college.
No free college. Not on my dime. Okay, now Trump. Is he a racist? In the past, maybe. A lot of this is a bunch of media junk that they throw into here. He refuses to condemn the white supremacists who are campa campaigning for him. Huh, well, Christians think that homosexuality is wrong. That doesn't mean that they don't, they don't want him dead. Why should it matter if somebody wants Donald Trump to be president? Why should it matter if Christians and uh, Muslims agree that homosexuality is wrong? One of them has a certain track record of killing millions of homosexuals. The other one, maybe a few hundred thousand during the Crusades and uh, Judaism, of course. But, come on. Traits radical groups is on, uh, you know... Okay, let's talk about his issues. Uh, let's see, his recent... Uh, people say that he's a racist, so let's see what he said about Mexicans. Now, let's see if I can find a certain one. Here it is. He called immigrants criminals and rapists. Did he now? Let's see what he said. This is a direct quote. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. He's saying that he's not sending the well-educated. He's not so sending the well-integrated. They're not... They're sending people who have lots of problems. And they're bringing those problems with us. Remember those problems they're having in Mexico? Let's see, uh, drug cartels, corruption in government, uh, government working for cartels, police working uh, for cartels against the government, uh, assassinations, uh, illegal foreclosures, you know. They're bringing drugs, they are. They're bringing crime, they are. They're bringing race rapists, they're. They are. There's a difference. In the English language, there's a lot of little quirks in there. He's not saying they are. This is a shortening of the English language. It's kind of like texting. Where we're, we're, he's saying they're bringing their racists. They're, ra they're rapists. They're bringing their rapists. He, they're here, he, I can't even talk now. He is not saying that they are rapists. He's saying that, he, in this context, he is saying he is saying that the immigration is bringing in rapists into our country, which is happening, which we see happening all over the world, including with the Muslim immigration in uh, Germany. You know, remember in, in the uh, other democracy, Sweden. You know, they're bringing in a lot of people. The big old thing uh, about a school. They're building a uh, housing next to a school. You know, sure that's going to go down well. And some, I assume, are good people. You know? While Christian theology doesn't talk about good people or bad people. You know, he's right. This is a correct statement. You know, if somebody leaves their country, it's because of a problem. You know, and uh, in Mexico, there aren't a lot of high-class schools. You know, there's a lot of poverty there. So, a lot of the uneducated people are leaving. You know, they're uneducated, they, you know... And, I'm not... I'm not advocating as education is the end-all and be-all as I dropped out of high school and got a GED. But... There, there's certain walks of life. You know, you either go for education or you go for religion or something. You know, what do you, what do you spend your time in? Sometimes your passion is a hobby, like gaming or horseback riding, maybe sports. 
you know, somebody might be advocated uh, for, um, you know, doing well in class. Let's look at the stereotypes in school. What crowds do you have? You have the, you know, really hot, beautiful blonde girls. You know, you have the, uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm going old school with this, okay? So you have the hippies who are, you know, usually doing drugs out there. You have the greasers who are the cool kids with the shoe polish in their hair. You have the thugs. You have the sports, etc. You have these, you know, there's different walks of life. You know, and it's like we forget that education is not the only thing to do with your life. Well, it might be one of the best things to do. Let's continue down the list. But you have people coming in, and I'm not just saying Mexicans. I'm talking about people that are from all over, that are killers and rapists, and they're coming into this country. Again, he's correct. What are we seeing with the Orlando shooters? Uh, we had a Muslim, a Muslim family. They're teaching their children in uh, what they learned, what they learned from their parents, up and up and up. Uh, and maybe they're not... You know, and it's a culture shock for the kids. They're being taught from their parents what is right. You know, they're being taught the Quran uh, in a certain way. You know, e Americans are really st stringy about their education. I wish they'd lighten up a bit, but there's something to be said for it. You know, there's certain things that, you know, we've learned about kids that, you know, have has really lowered the crime rates in America. You know, it, it, it's stuff that, you know, some f first, second generation Muslim families don't have access to. They don't know about yet. So th I think that's one of the reasons why they're radicalizing. You know, he, he's right. You know, they are bringing killers and rapists. We In America, we have the, uh, you know, mid, high level, maybe well-educated people. And then you have the terrorists. You don't have 5.2 billion working class Muslims. You know, we we have the white and the black, we don't have the gray. <laughs> that came out wrong, but you get the idea. Uh, he, insisted, he insisted that the Mexican government intentionally sends their criminals to the U.S. Uh, the Mexican government is much smarter, much sharper, much more cunning, and they're sending the bad ones over here because they don't want to pay for them. They don't want to take care of them. Well, is Mexico really known for their prisons or their mental... Pr uh, uh, mental... What do you even call them? Smart... Uh, let's see, you have the short bus, and then you have the... Uh, mentalist, mental in institutions, you know, are they known for healthcare? Are they known for providing government aid to people with mental disability? I don't think so. So he's right on that account. You know, the Mexican government is smarter and sharper than their, their politicians right now. Alright, six. Well, someone's done doing the raping... He provided evidence that Latino immigrants were rapists. Well, someone's doing the raping done. I mean, somebody's doing it. Who's raping? Who's doing the raping? <sighs> well, that's a fine bit of quote mining. When he was asked to provide some evidence for his claim that Latino immigrants crossed the border were rapists on CNN Situation Room, Trump told... Don, okay, so Don's a first name. He got his information from a Fusion article where Lemon corrected him, explaining that the article actually said 80% of women and girls from Central America were raped by human smugglers, gay members, or other migrants or government authorities while immigrating to the U.S. Trump shot back to missing the victims and suggesting Latino immigrants were the ones raping the victims. How is he... How is he dismissing the victims? So, somebody said to, asked him to, who's, they pretty much asked him, provide proof that it's Latinos who are raping Americans, women. Uh, so, uh, Trump told Mr. Lemon he got his information from a Fusion article. And then when Lemon corrected him, explaining that the article actually said 80% of women and girls from Central America are raped by human smuggler. 
human smugglers and gang members. So, yes, Latinos, human smugglers and gang members, usually these are people who profit from this. You know, if we're talking about human smugglers, let's see, uh, you have the people who transform to the border, so maybe not all Latinos. You know, there, there's there's definitely, uh, you know, you know how America has a trucking company, and we basically ship uh, resources all over America? Well, we definitely have some sort of transportation company for, um, for you know, for illegal immigration, to because the further away from the uh, Mexican-American border they are, the less chance they have of being caught by Border Patrol. So there's got to be some sort of transportation they're getting there. So there's got to be some rape. Uh, and with the, you know, as far as that go, I'm just going to assume that closer to the border, uh, closer, since they're generally closer to Mexico, there's going to be a higher population of Mexicans. So I'm not saying it's all Mexicans. I'm just saying that since they're closer to Mexico, that's kind of a, let's, let's call it a racial-centric area. You know, there's probably a higher level of Latinos closer to Mexico, don't you think? You know, I don't agree with this, but I get, I, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, he took a job at Jeb Bush over his Mexican-born wife. Uh, Jeb Bush has to like Mexican illegals because of his wife. Well, I mean, women have a way of playing uh, their husbands, controlling with sex. So, I mean, I guess he's right and he's wrong. Uh, he said his followers were passionate after being told two men beat a Hispanic man in his name. It would be a shame. I will say the people who are following me are very passionate. They love this country, and they want this country to be great again. They are passionate. They are passionate! You know, let, let's be honest. Muslim jihadists... Uh, uh, sorry, let me correct myself. Radical Muslim who have de Muslims who have declared jihad on the United States are passionate about their beliefs. Radical Christians during the Crusades who were uneducated were radical about their beliefs. Who were passionate about their beliefs. Passion is not an endearing term. It is not a verb. It, it, it's it's describing a feeling of intimacy uh, to an ideology. <laughs> I guess that's the easiest way to explain it. You know, he's, he's not saying he affirms or denies. He is a politician. He doesn't want anybody against him. He doesn't want to uh, make people pissed off at him. He's saying that, you know, they're passionate. Basically, he's talking bureaucracy. That's what it is. Uh, he kicked George Ramos out of a press conference. Go back to Univision. Uh, apparently, that's racist. You know, if you're going to hold a private conference, you know, if you're paying for security, I don't know what the facts are, but if it's a private conference, private talk, you can kick whoever you want out. He blamed blacks and Hispanic for violent crimes across the country, and that's... <laughs> Sadly, overwhelming amount of violent crime in our major cities is committed by blacks and Hispanics. A tough subject must <laughs> be discussed. Let's look at the numbers, shall we? Let's see. Uh, so, total crimes. This is all of America. So, total crimes in America in 2014, 9,390,473. Uh, by white, which white is a larger uh, area of... pop. How do I say this? Larger... Lar larger density of population in America than blacks. 
So, 6,502,919. Blacks, 200, uh, or 2,640,067. Uh, and that's really all I care about right now. Um... This does not take into account writing. Okay, so here are the numbers. You know, I'm not going to point them out because I'm going to be called a rapist. I mean, <laughs> a racist. Yeah, I'm going to be called a rapist if I point certain things out. But, you know. <sighs> okay. So obviously there are more, um, let's see, is this what I'm looking for? See, those are real numbers, and I'm looking for percents. I'm looking to say that, you know, uh, African American people make up this percentage of America, and they present, uh, and they do this much percent of crime. And that's what he's saying. This looks like it. Okay, uh, so the total victims, uh, this is 2014, uh, whites, uh, 4,091,971, uh, blacks about a, you know, about 1 million. So make up one fourth. Uh, so total of 50%, uh, 56% uh, crime, black. 62% crime. Annual average number of victims. Whites. Number offended. Total uh, calculated 100%. Okay. So this is... Okay, so victims. So race of offender. Crime, so we're talking about, this is white on white crime, 50%. White on black crime, 10%. White on Hispanic, 21%. Okay. Black on white crime, 13.7%. Now look at this number. This is big. Black on black crime, 62.2%. Now, I'm going to I'm going to put forward a theory. You know, this is a theory. Don't hate me for it. People generally like to be around people of their same color. This is not racism. This is tribalism. This is a known general uh characteristic of humanity. You know, this is something that's built into humans. So you get stereotypes. You get let's call let's pull one stereo. Out. You have the uh, the the um, suburbs, which are usually uh, generalized or stereotyped as white, uh, uh, not occupied white, su white superior. No, I don't want to say white superiority. Uh, what, what am I saying? You know, generally larger numbers of whites in suburbs. You know, with the stereotypical, uh, you know, family house with a good car that's about 10 miles out of the town. Then you have, stereotypically, the hood, where large numbers of black people live together. This is, you know, this is tribalism. This happens in our culture, and it's something that we've seen for years and years and years. You know, and of course, you know... If there's a large number of blacks in a general area, the crime is going to be committed against each other of the same race. You know, just because that's who's there, that's what happens. So, 
Trump has said what Trump says might not be correct about the about white actually no white on black crime is actually really low 10 percent you know any crime is um unethical and wrong you know any crime even victimist crime but white on black crime is 10.4 percent in the united states of america in 2014. <laughs> I'd say racism might be down to at least 10%. Would anybody else agree on those numbers? You know, but black on white crime, still 50%. So apparently the feelings aren't mutual. Black on black crime? Or no, 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 no. I was wrong. I apologize. I was wrong. Black on white crime, 13.7%. Black on black crime, 62.2%. So, do we want to call this racism? So again, <clears throat> let's see what Trump's statement is. Uh, the overwhelming amount of violent crime in our major cities as committed by blacks and Hispanic, a tough subject must be discussed. Ooh. In major cities, is this major? Um, th so, this isn't the correct chart for this, but still, I'm not gonna say in major cities. So I'm not gonna. Th this is not to. Uh, so this this isn't even valid. So forget. You know, so I can't refute Trump right here. I can't affirm or deny this. But still, we do have as as you saw in that chart. There is black on black crime, there's white and white crime. You know. And there's a... Yeah. Now, um... Let me see if I can find the new assault. I can't even find it now. Okay, again, I'm going to show the seven twenty uh seven minute twenty one second video. I'm going to show it under uh freedom of use statement. My statement is that this is a trans formative work due to the fact that this video does not make up the entirety of my content also under the statute that this video is not monetized I do not gain any revenue from this so let's watch this video So this goes along in with my why I'm voting for Trump.
So this guy's the Trump supporter. I think the green shirt's the Trump supporter. Trump supporter, woman, lady being pushed. Let's see who pushed her. Oops, sorry. I don't want to be racist, so I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm stopping the video. That infuriates me. Whoops. Uh, you get the point. These are people who aren't valuing education. Now, again, education is not the end-all, be-all of all walks of life. These people are very passionate about their beliefs. Again, I'm going to say it. The First Amendment protects your right to freedom of speech, freedom to expression. It does not, and nowhere in the Constitution of the United States, nor your basic human rights, does it give you the right to censor someone for their beliefs. This does not pertain to... Um, th this does not pertain to religion. This does not pertain to uh, corporations. This pertains to all citizens. This is a common law to every American, to every human on the face of this planet. You do not have the right to stop another human being from their, from utilizing their freedom of speech, their freedom of expression. This is disgusting. This is bile, and now, this is illegal. <laughs> it was already illegal. This is this is felony here. Now, this is coming from a member of Anonymous. You know, I, you know, I didn't support the Trump attacks, but I, I Anonymous has done a lot of good over the years. You know, their doxing of the Westboro Baptist Church. I was. You know, in the chat room when that happened, I'm not going to incriminate myself here. I haven't committed any crimes. And there was the... Let's see, what what else has there been? Let's see, there was the... Uh, dirty Water in... I think it was Illinois. You know, where the water looked like, you know, brown, like poop. Probably tastes like it too from what it looked like. Uh, WikiLeaks, that was another big one. You know what, my next my next video is gonna be on that. But for now, I am voting for Donald Trump to stop this. I'm voting for Donald Trump to stop feminism. Now I don't mean feminism, I mean third wave intersexual feminism. The original feminism, there was nothing, there, you know, the original feminism was good. It was great. You know, we had strong women. They got the freedom to vote. I'm all for that. Freedom to vote. But now, you know, we had a second wave where they said, you know, maybe men need to start controlling themselves a bit more. You know, that was fine. Because lots of men did. <laughs> you know? Now there's third wave. Third wave is saying that, you know, 
men are evil by default. Masculinity is evil. Something, you know, that I believe that God created. You know, or something, or they're complaining about something, whether you believe in evolution or creation. It's either something that God created or something they adapted successfully in male humanity for, you know, what whatever they believe. 30 billion, trillion, quintillion years. I, you know, I'm voting for him to end that. Now, on the wall, he's right about the wall. You know, if somebody's going to break a law to get there, how can we logically trust them when they're here? You know, not to mention, we don't even know how many are here, because <laughs> if you've broken a law to get here, you probably aren't too keen to sign your name on a form to say you are here. Now, as far as jobs... There's there's more to it. It's more than just, you know, people coming in and stealing your job. It's not about, you know, that's part of the problem. That's a small part. <clears throat> there's also the drugs so easily coming across the border. But, you know, of course, they're probably going to get in a Cessna or a plane. But, you know, it's just, it, it, as much as I hate the NSA, you know, it's, it's kind of the same thing. It's security theater. You know, just don't break the laws to get here. You know. American government, fix your internship program for, not internship, but your fix your immigration pro, fix your immigration process, you know, and s let's halt the free, like, flood of immigration coming over our, you know, what is it, like, three foot, you know, metal wire fence that you can literally just step over. You know, it's kind of like you did with those baby cages. If your parents ever put you in those little baby cages, you know, you get, eventually got old enough to where you could just step over it and you felt so empowered. You know, or maybe you have a dog and your dog looks so, you know, maybe a little puppy you put it under the cage and then you just step over it and you look so hurt. It's just like that. It's like that tall. You know, half of it, we don't even have a fence. It's all farmland. You know, that might be another problem with the wall. You know, if we put a wall across it, how are we going to get farms? You know, we're going to have to figure that out. Now, about Muslim immigration. People says that he's racist about Muslims. I've made my views about Islam well known. So, but I'm just going to explore it from Trump's issue, okay? I, I've already done a video on my, pro my issue with uh, the Islamic belief, the Islamic religion, but here's what Trump, what Trump believes. In the general area of the Islamic State, this is the people who are conducting active jihad against Western values in the United States of America and pretty much the world. We have found printing presses that are printing out documentation for immigrants to legally come across the border. Now, we know this. We also know that there are people, uh, Muslims coming across the border, you know, they're getting, you know, okay, they're getting legal uh, immigration, but they there's something that's not clicking with the education of their children. You know, as I said before, there's um, a lot of things that we've learned about education in the past few years. And it's one of the, uh, I don't want to say the right things, because liberals have gone way overboard with it. But one of the okay things liberals have actually somewhat got right, you know, protecting our children. As much as I hate to say that, that's one of the few things they've done right. <clears throat> and so... You know, the education. There's certain little things that we didn't know about children that they don't know about in third world countries. And, you know, my, you know, I hated public school, and I'm sure Muslims don't want public schools either. You know, they don't want them put into all that feminist junk, you know. You know, the place where they show pictures of female genitals and sex ed classes. You know, I didn't want to go through that. I, I failed that class on on 
on my beliefs. You know, I, I didn't pay attention on purpose in that class. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat's getting dry. And so, you know, they're going to want to homeschool them. So they school them in the way that they were schooled, the way that they feels right, which, you know, I, I, I can't, you know, I can't say it's wrong, but the problem is they're bringing them up in a way that was built in, in a, or that was designed for a third world country. You know, and so the kids are seeing what the parents are teaching them. Uh, and these are, these are kids, they want to see how to change their environment. They want to see how they can help their environment. So they sometimes radicalize. You know, have you ever seen your kid want to find, you know, he finds something new, he finds something good, maybe on a playground, uh, let's see, what, what would be a thing for that? See, I, I'm trying to find a non-church experience with this. Uh. Have you ever seen those adopt a highway cleanup crews? And, they're, and the kids are always so rare to go. They're all, they're, all, they're always happy, always fun. They're enjoying it because they're affecting their society. You know, except for maybe the one fat kid, and that fat kid was me, of course. It's kind of like that. They're passionate. They found something new and interesting, and they want to, they they want to learn about it. They want to fight for it. They want they want to, you know, they want to learn everything they can about it. You know, and. The parents are only so happy to oblige. They come across these 109 verses inciting violence, and they say, "Oh, wait. The, this this country I live in has different beliefs than mine. You know, and my Bible tells me to do this. My Quran tells me to do this, and my parents are telling me to do this. So the, these 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 Christians are wrong." And that's what we saw in Orlando. Now, I'm I'm not against the Muslim people. I'm not against the Muslim people. I'm against the Islamic philosophy, the Islamic ideology, the Islamic religion. And if you think that makes me a racist, well... Go back to school. So that's that's the wall. What what else has he said? Let's see, I've done political correctness, the wall, halting immigration from uh, Saudi Arabia. Censorship. I think that's good. My name is Director Pride. Thanks for watching. This is my opinion, my perspective. Good night.